in the waters of the Malacca Straits. The flying ship has begun its most important test to date. A VIP flight for its first potential customers. We are here to experience the airfish to see whether it can live up to our standard. Oh, it's really cool. If these execs are impressed, their hotel could become the first owners of a private flying ship. 30, 35. But the choppy sea is making takeoff anything but smooth sailing. It's very bumpy. The flying ship should be just seconds away from takeoff. But with each lift of the nose, the rough water sucks the hull back and slams it down. Again and again. It's not the smooth ride the hotel team were hoping for. But to overcome tough takeoffs, the Airfish uses technology developed for high power sports boats. Traditional boats have a smooth hull, but when they gain speed, the large surface area builds up more and more drag. But some of the fastest boats have a cutout in the hull called a step. So as they speed up, they lift up onto the step and skim the water's surface on just a tiny patch of hull. The airfish borrows this design using its own step to push up out of the water and get to takeoff speed quicker. When it hits 40 miles an hour, the wings take over and lift the ship into the air. It's an extraordinary feat of nautical engineering. In the choppy waters, Kenneth throws open the throttle to battle through the waves. Throttle 84%. And the flying ship rises up on its step. Speed increasing. Take off. Airborne. 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 We are off of the ground. Reducing up here, 6,000. Airspeed, 72. Gliding on a cushion of compressed air, the bumpy start becomes an effortless ride. The moment after we airborne, it was smooth as silk. It's really cool, it's really cool. Very close to the sea. Yeah. We're on a power car above the sea. <laughs> yeah, exactly. With the wheels off the ground. <laughs> With clear water ahead, Kenneth increases the speed. We have uh, flew just about eight minutes. About oh, eight minutes. Okay. Kenneth, by the way, how, what speed are we flying at now? Ground speed 76 knots. 76 knots is faster than any yacht on Earth. We are travelling about close to 90 miles per hour. Oh, really? Wow. Miles per hour, you know, I don't, I don't feel anything. But how does the flying ship achieve these speeds so quickly after takeoff? The pumping heart of the flying ship is the same 7-litre V8 engine as in a Corvette. During takeoff, it delivers a staggering 500 horsepower. Its crankshaft drives a pair of super strong rubber belts that whip through the craft at more than 40 miles an hour they deliver the raw engine power to large gears, which transfer rotation along drive shafts, spinning two custom-engineered propellers at over 1,000 RPM. This one-of-a-kind precision powertrain allows the flying ship to soar at close to 130 miles an hour. The flying ship cuts through the air with incredible efficiency it uses just a fraction of the fuel of a similar-sized helicopter, while satisfying Steve and Sunita's need for fast hotel transportation. It is very important for us that uh, our hotel representatives are happy because we are looking at potential client. After its bumpy start, the flying ship is back on track. Ten minutes. The VIPs could still be tempted yet. 
the moment when clients like them buy one of these and the rest will follow suit. The, the fastest you can get by land from Malacca to our place is about an hour and a half. That's the fastest yeah. which yeah. rarely you get. You probably reach there in about two hours. Exactly. Kenneth's been lucky with the sea traffic so far, but that's about to change. The Straits of Malacca are dotted with big obstacles. Look at the tanker. Whoa. I think there's an oil tanker. Eh? Look there, there's another one. This one looks more like a cargo one. On the road, you see motorcycles, you see cars, you see lorries, buses. We see tankers here all the time. Kenneth and Captain Saeed are on high alert. At these speeds, a collision could be fatal. Unlike an ordinary plane, they can't adjust altitude to fly over these obstacles. They must maneuver around the tankers. 75 knots, power 5,500. The flying ship steers just like a plane. Rolling to the left. Rolling. Captain Saeed turns the control wheel and flaps on the winglets and tail, roll the craft into a smooth curving path. We're going to turn around. Oh, OK. Captain Saeed eases the flying ship safely round the tankers. And they've got a clear path to the hotel. You see the hibiscus in front? Oh, look, there, look, it's the hibiscus. The flying ship has clearly impressed the guests, smashing the normal journey time to Port Dixon by 90 minutes. We just flew 22 minutes, and we can see the resort. It's right in front of us now. If you have guests, you know, from the resort who wants to go to Malacca, this is definitely a very good alternative. The signs are positive, but after rough seas rocked the clients during takeoff, Kenneth could use a smooth landing. Airspeed uh, 66 knots, long speed 79 knots. He eases back on the throttle, slowing to 40 miles an hour. Anytime now. This causes the airflow under the reverse delta wings to slow significantly, reducing lift. Brace. Okay. But the sea still isn't playing ball. The choppy water is making landing even bumpier than takeoff. So engineers had to design the flying ship to roll with these punches. Above the hull, this machine is built for the air, using materials that are lightweight and tough. Outside is a super strong carbon fiber shell. Inside, a sturdy honeycomb structure is infused with heat resistant resin to double the strength. Below the cockpit, the hull is built to take a beating. Under a tough fiberglass skin, a buoyant PVC foam core designed to absorb wave strikes. These two very different halves work together and allow the flying ship to land safely. Not too bad. Wow, the wind is Whew, terrible. Okay, relax. The flying ship has shown that it can bypass busy roads and smash journey times for high-rolling hotel guests. <laughs>